Now that I've uh, completed the VGA card and demonstrated video scrolling, uh, I want to start work on a Ben Eater style 6502 computer to uh, connect it to. And um, I've built that here and I wanted to show it to you. It's a little bit different than Ben's. Electrically, it's very similar um, with only two differences. One of those differences being that I am using uh, my now favorite uh, memory chip instead of a ROM. This is a, a flash RAM SST 39 SF 010A 70. Um, as you've, as I mentioned before, I like this chip because it is uh, twice as fast as an EEPROM and it's also more flexible in programming it. Um, otherwise, this computer is electrically exactly like uh, Ben Eater's with one other little small difference. Here on the RAM chip, instead of wiring up um, the high order uh, bit uh, to um, the appropriate address line, since we're uh, turning off the high order, we're turning off uh, chip select on this chip with the high order bit um, set, um, I have simply um, set it to, uh, uh, tied it to ground, but that bit will always be zero. Um, otherwise, uh, it's the same from the switch, the CPU. Um, what I have done is I've moved the uh, logic chip, the 7400 chip, from down in this area um, to being right up in here. And uh, that was just to have a better layout for what I'm doing here because I'm using this zero insertion for socket, which makes it very easy to take a chip in and out. And... Uh, so uh, this requires a lot more room since this is a 40-pin uh, socket. Um, there wasn't room to put um, the RAM chip and the ROM chip. There certainly wasn't room to put the ROM chip in the middle um, like Ben does. I find that Ben's design makes it uh, very impractical for pulling the uh, ROM chip in and out frequently, which I am doing a lot as I'm debugging my software. So uh, instead, um, I'm using the zero insertion force socket. So this is this chip, however, is wired up uh, very similar to the way um, Ben did, except that uh, I've moved uh, the gate that he had. Um, he was using this gate uh, for um, anding the uh, clock pulse with the um, with pin uh, with uh, address uh, line uh, fourteen A fourteen, and he was using doing that up here. I'm doing it um, down here, but um, electrically. Um, this is, uh, this is identical to his. I also have a slightly different style, um, resistor or a variable resistor here. This is a trim pot, 10 turn trim pot. Um, I don't know if you can see, but under here it's, uh, it's wired up to these same pins, um, here. So just, I just, uh, extended the uh, pins with some, uh, soldered some extensions on there, uh, wired that up. Um, otherwise, though, this is just like uh, Ben Eater's, um, and uh, I wanted to show it um, working. So um, let me switch here. I've got um, a Hello World uh, here, and it's ready to be um, compiled. So... So here I'm compiling. Um, and um, as you can see, it's a short program. Now I'm going to program it um, using, this is my uh, Tommy Prom programmer, which I have shown before. Um, this, uh, you can communicate to this using a COM program such as Minicom, um, but I found that to be a little bit cumbersome. So I've written my own, uh, I've written my own um, Python program to do the uh, programming of it. And it works pretty well. Um, and that'll be on my GitHub, in which I will put a link in the description. So uh, let's program this. Come on, ah, let me just do this. Write ROM and A dot out is where it did. So now that's going to send the uh, send it to it. You can see the uh, the light is blinking, and it's uh, transmitting. Here it shows you how much it's sent and in how many seconds. Uh, 
All right, let's uh, that aside. Put that in there. Let's wire our clock to it. Those of you who are familiar with Ben Eater's work will recognize this as the Ben Eater clock module. Let's turn that all the way up. Add power. Start the clock, reset. And there's my hello world. Um, so that's working with, of course, the Ben Eater clock. But the real question is, um, can it work on uh, a high speed clock? So now let's uh, try it with. Uh, With a different clock, so this is uh, this is a clock circuit like I've shown you before that I made out of a uh, 7404 uh, knot gate. I've tied. Uh, well, first of all, you can see this is a this is a 10. Come on, focus on that. This is a 10 megahertz chip, and uh, this is a uh, 74HC04. Uh, not gate, why uh, six not gate? It has. Uh, I've tied the uh, output of uh, this skate to the uh, to the input of this one, and these are one k resistors. And then we bridge the whole thing, the uh, input of the first one to the output of the second one. We bridge that with uh, a crystal, our ten megahertz crystal, and we'll plug in the power. And push the reset button. Oh, you know, looking up the clock might help. Try that again. Plug in the clock. I'm going to plug the clock in. Plug in the clock in here. This ties uh, through these white wires uh, to the chip clock. And pushing the reset button. There you go. So that's hello world at uh, 10 megahertz. And the reason that this uh, can operate at 10 megahertz is uh, because of uh, the use of the um, SST39SF010 uh, chip, uh, 70 chip. So this, this memory chip um, responds in 70 nanoseconds. With a 10 megahertz clock, you have 100 nanoseconds uh, per clock cycle. Um, so if you use an EE prom, which uh, typically responds in 150 nanoseconds, it is likely not going to be fast enough. It takes too long for the chip to respond uh, to, to put out the data after receiving its address. But you can run at 10 megahertz, and this is using a 65 CO2 chip from West, uh, Western Design Center. This chip is designed to run at up to 14 megahertz, so that's why all of this works. Um, I'd like to show you one other thing that uh, that I um, have been doing that uh, simplifies uh, my life a bit. You'll notice when I program this, uh, I programmed it, and even though the um, here you can see, even though that um, all we wrote, uh, all the the program is 145 bytes with six bytes at the end, and those are the uh, vector bytes. So that's the non-maskable interrupt, the reset vector, and the um, IRQ vector, and so. There's a total of, what, 50, 151 bytes, but we had to write um, 32,768, all 32K bytes. Um, let me show you how there's a way around that. And this is something you can do at least if you're using uh, Tommy Prom. So let's go back here. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to move my uh, vectors to the top. And you can see my reset vectors, uh, I'm using, I'm, I'm, they're sending them both to the same uh, memory location. And then I'm just doing a return from interrupt 
So I'm not using those right now, but I want to have them defined so I can show this to you. And then here's the reset factor that has my hello world program. And at the end, I'm going to put um, a directive called if def. This says if defined, and I'm going to call vectors. And I'm going to put end if at the end of that. And now um, it will only compile this part of the code if something called vectors is defined, if I have a label called vectors defined. And I don't have a label called vectors defined anywhere in uh, this code, so um, this won't get compiled. So if I compile it, uh, here you'll see that it only uh, compiled the, the segment at 8,000, whereas prior it compiled the segment at 8,000 and another segment at, at FFFA. So that prevents it from compiling, but, um, and because our chip already has those vectors programmed onto it, I can now write to um, this, uh, I can now write to um, this to the ROM and, and it'll still work. Um, let me show you what happens. So let me uh, put, uh, put the ROM chip in to my Tommy Prom programmer. And then um, let's write it. So now it's sending and uh, it's sending the file and you can see it sent, it took 3.7 seconds and it only sent 0.2 kilobytes. So it sent 256 bytes, you can see, uh, to the writer. So it, uh, it only needed to send 100 and, uh, 145, but uh, yeah, it sends, it sends it page by page. So uh, it's in, in a page is 128 bytes. So that's the minimum you could send. Um, so it sends 256 bytes. It takes four seconds instead of 21 seconds. When you're trying to debug code and you're popping it in and out, um, th that can save a lot of time. So that's really worth doing. But what would happen if we were to um, actually make use of um, the IRQ? Like we actually had some code here. I'll just, I'm not going to do anything. But like if I did a load A, um, if I did a load A uh, zero here, well, that would change where the reset vector is because I've added two bytes to the program here at the beginning. And now if uh, we were to run this, um, if we were to program this, uh, let's compile this the same way. And then we, um, and then we program it. Well, now that vector is going to be sending it to the wrong place. It's going to be sending it to um, to that to that zero, I believe. So if we put that into the if we put that into our computer and we run it, we can't really be sure what's going to happen without more careful analysis. there and pushing the button you can see it's not working and that's what i would expect that it's uh it's jumping to an unknown instruction so um so what do we do about that well it's it's very simple all you got to do is pass in that vectors um to the um to the compiler so that it has that that label so if i do dash d vectors this is telling it that th this is dash D means um, add this label uh, to it. So if I compile it with that, now you can see it compiled both the 8,000 segment and it compiled the segment at the end. And that will have now, of course, the new, um, the new bytes. So now if I uh, put the chip back into the computer, and put in the power and press reset boom it works so the thing to remember that's important is uh if you make changes to your nmi if, first of all put your n your your uh, non maskal interrupt and your interrupt request handlers at the top of the code make them first then put the break put in your uh beginning code and then at the end Wrap your uh, vectors uh, definitions with uh, if def and vectors. I don't have to call it vectors. It could be any label you want. The, the point is that the first time you compile it, be sure you compile it uh, using 
using using a dash D vectors or whatever label you put there. And, uh, but after that, after that, you can make all the changes you want to your program that you want, as long as you don't change the, uh, the interrupt vectors at the top. If you change those, then you got to recompile with dash D vectors. But if you don't, if you don't fiddle with those, you make changes down here, you can make all the changes you want and you don't need to worry about that. So for example, let me just demonstrate that. Let me change uh, witness me to hello world. Now I will uh, recompile, but without the vectors. And you can see now that it only did the 8,000 segment. It didn't do the end at the end. So if I, uh, plug this chip in to the Tommy prom programmer, and then we write that. Now you'll see it's going to write it in 3.7 seconds. Boom. Then let's put the chip back in the computer. And this time when we start it, it will say, hello world. There you go. So uh, I highly recommend um, modifying your Ben Eater computer to be able to take the uh, flash RAM. Um, these are only available. The, the, the difference between these and the EEPROM physically is that this has uh, got four more pins. So it's two pins longer. So you can't just pop it in. You're going to have to uh, make a little room for it. I suggest um, in the Ben Eater that you move these wires out of the way so that you can uh, take up. He, he did leave enough space that you could pop that in. And then you'll have to move your uh, VCC, uh, sorry, VDD uh, power pin. Um, you'll have to move that over to, well, that'd be this one, but... It'd be in here and Ben Eater. So you'd move that over two pins and you're gonna also have to move over the uh, the, the wire connecting the right enable to high. You're gonna need to move that over two pins. Um, and then you're gonna have to put in a couple of uh, wires to uh, ground these uh, um, these upper address, the, the, the upper address pins uh, because you won't be using those upper addresses because we're not addressing all the memory. This has, uh, this has 128 uh, kilobits and we're only going to be using 32. So you got to ground the upper two address pins. Other than that, um, it would work. And I may do a video on that uh, sometime in the future. If I ever build an exact replica of the Ben Eater computer, then um, I would show you how you could uh, uh, put in one of these flash RAMs. So, but anyway, that's those are the instructions for now. I hope that's helpful. And uh, I hope to see you all again very soon um, as I make my next video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my videos, uh, please subscribe and uh, click the like button. That helps me out a lot. Thank you very much.